Hi friends, this is Carrie from Carrie's Culinary Crafts. Today, for the pantry challenge, we are going to be doing a play on shepherd's pie. This is what I call a, like a chicken shepherd's pie. So, and usually I make this when I have uh, like leftover mashed potatoes, um, but I'm going to do this if for this pantry challenge because you guys remember from my dry goods tour, I'll leave a I card up here. Um, I have a bunch of these instant mashed potatoes that have expired in August, August 27th, 2022. So I don't want to waste food. So I'm going to go ahead and use them. So I'm going to go ahead and make up two packs of this butter mashed potatoes. I have some leftover chicken here. And I have, you can use either or. Um, I just grabbed one of each because that's what was right in front. And I have a cream of chicken and a cream of mushroom. And this is another example of, because I usually make things from scratch, I'll make my own cream of mushroom, cream of chicken from scratch. These, um, these dates on the cans are even this is October of 2021, and this one is Mar no September of 2022. So both of these are expired, but they are in cans. They are still good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use those up. I'm gonna use um, peas and carrots from my freezer. You can use whatever kind of mixed vegetables or just corn or whatever you want Want to use up. Um, I have a bunch of vegetables in my freezer that need to get used up. So I'm going to go ahead and use these peas and carrots. And I also have some French fried onions here that I'm going to top with. It just adds a nice little crunch, a little something different. And just a little, a handful of cheese in it. Um, and then I also found, didn't quite use all of this up. There's just a wee little bit in here of this um, bourgeon cheese. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in there as well, just to get it out of my fridge. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and make up the potatoes according to the package instructions. I won't bore you with that, um, but I'll bring you back when I'm putting everything all together. Okay, I got my potatoes reconstituted there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna butter. Oh, can you see that? I'm gonna butter this 13 by nine inch baking dish here. I have a little bit of butter left on here and I'm just gonna spread that along. You can use whatever type of oil you want. Um, I'm just using the butter because of the mashed potatoes. Butter tastes wonderful with mashed potatoes. So here are the potatoes and I'm just gonna go ahead and dump them into this casserole dish. Actually, this is a good way to use up some of these um, instant potatoes. Because this is a dish that the, my family loves, but we don't really get it that often because the only time I'd make it is when we'd have some extra mashed potatoes. And we don't always have extra mashed potatoes. My 15 year old absolutely loves mashed potatoes and he could eat just a whole plate of them. So now I'm just going to spread out the potatoes. You could do it just along the bottom or you can do it the bottom and up along the sides. It doesn't matter. It just depends on how much potatoes you have. I think I'm just going to put these along the bottom. All right, so we're going to set that aside now and we're gonna mix all the other ingredients. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this bowl here. I'm gonna dump my chicken in there. A 
and some scissors here. Cut the peas and carrots, put those in. I'm just going to dump them all in. And these are frozen, doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and open up these two cans of cream of mushroom and cream of chicken. Like I said, you can use either or, or if you want to use another cream of soup. I'm sure like cream of celery would be just fine. I just reached in and grabbed the first two that I looked at and looked at the dates and said, yep, yeah, I think I'll use those. just a, a small handful of cheese in here maybe a half a cup um, and I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use all of these but I'm only gonna put just I'm gonna put a little bit in here just to mix it in and then I'll put the rest on the top I love french fried onions okay now do you want to give this a good stir look at that it looks kind of like a chicken pot pie filling basically which was the intention of me using this um leftover chicken, I was going to make uh, my son a chicken pot pie to take back to school for one of his dinners, but he said they had dinner covered this week, so I had to figure out something else to do with it, so this is what I came up with. All right, so all of that is mixed. Oh, I did want to put this cheese in there, that's right. It's just a wee little bit. I'm just going to crumble it up. Okay, and that's it guys. How quick was that putting all of that together? Super, super simple. And usually most people have these ingredients. The only thing is, is the mashed potatoes. But like I said, this is what I made when I had leftover mashed potatoes. But now I figured out I can use up all those uh, instant mashed potatoes use it doing this recipe too because this would be awesome for that okay so I got my mashed potatoes here and here is my filling I'm just going to dump it on top spread it out over top of all of the mashed potatoes. Doesn't that already look good? <laughs> this is like another thing that I'll do after um, Thanksgiving, using all the Thanksgiving leftovers, make this. And really, if you, all you need is using the turkey, mashed potatoes and use the gravy instead of you wouldn't have to use the cream of mushroom or cream of chicken uh, use gravy 
whatever veggies you have left over, voila, there you go. Okay, so there's that. Now all I'm going to do is just take another small handful, like a half a cup, because this isn't really like a, a cheesy dish. It just, I like the sharpness of the cheddar, just adding a another layer of um, flavor in there. So just a little bit to sprinkly dink on top. And then I'm gonna take the rest of these and coat the top. And this will be a nice crunch to add with your chicken shepherd's pie. And there you go, guys. Look at that. Took me no time at all to throw that together. Um, and this, you'll just want to put it in a 350 degree oven, probably about 30 minutes. Everything is already cooked. You're just going to wait until it's it's bubbly. So check it at 30 minutes. If it's bubbly, you can just pull it out and just give it let it rest for like five minutes. If it's not quite bubbly yet, or if you feel like down in the center or something, it's it's not like completely hot, then just leave it in. Put it in for another five or 10 minutes, whatever you need. Um, but generally I find it's pretty much done 30 minutes. And then you just pull it out and then you just wanna let it rest for about five to 10 minutes because it, everything will thicken back up again because you'll see it's excuse me, it gets all bubbly and it might be a little bit runny. So just let it sit for five to 10 minutes. It'll thicken all up and you'll be ready to go. And I will um, bring you back whenever I pull it out of the oven. It's only noon right now, so we're not ready for dinner yet, but I will get a shot of getting it out of the oven later. And thanks guys for joining me. This is Carrie from Carrie's Culinary Crafts. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button below, and you will see more videos like this and how I use up all of my pantry items. Bye guys. Okay, my timer just went off for the chicken shepherd's pie. So we're gonna take a look and see if it's If it's done or not. Okay, it's definitely looking delicious, but it's not quite bubbling. Yeah, and I can, I mean, it's hot, but I can touch it. So I'm going to take the foil off and you don't have to put the foil on it. I do because I don't want my onions to burn. Um, but since it's been in there for like 30 minutes with the foil on, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in for like another 10 minutes without the foil. And I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, our chicken shepherd's pie is now done. I put it in for an extra 10 minutes and it is all bubbly and God, does this smell good. So I'm going to put this out on the table and let it rest for five to 10 minutes, at least until my husband comes down and it's dinner time. And this is a definite one you guys wanna try. Super simple, simple, easy, super delicious. It's comfort food to the max. See you guys. Quick lunch for me today. Um, I found something else that needs to be used up. I have got several of these ready pastas, which are really nice to keep in your pantry. Um, and not sure if you can see that or not, but they expired October of 2022. So I've got about five of them, so I'm going to have to use them. So I'm going to go ahead and have some for lunch. So I'm just going to dump this in here. And if you're not familiar with this, it's already cooked pasta. All you have to do is just reheat it. Um, not the greatest consistency, but it'll do in a pinch. Um, so, and this is about how much you get. 
It's a little bit over half full of a bowl. And I'm gonna put some of my garlic herb butter in that and just have some buttered noodles for my lunch today. Simple as that. Hi friends, welcome to Carrie's Culinary Crafts where we talk all things food. And today we're continuing on with the uh, 2023 pantry challenge and today I'm going to throw together actually uh, two meals because I'm going to be extremely busy tomorrow and doing some running around so um, I'm going to do two of them today because tomorrow is a leftover day and then they will both just be done and ready for tomorrow so today's dinner was um, supposed to be a raviolis and a salad. I'm gonna make the salad and I'm gonna have the raviolis. However, this isn't a family size bag of raviolis. So uh, it's just a regular bag and my 15 year old son can pretty much polish this whole thing off by himself. So I am gonna make this for him. So hopefully there's one serving at least for leftovers. And then I'm gonna go ahead also and make the Mexican lasagna. Um, and that's going to be a 13 by nine pan. So that will have plenty left over that we will have for tomorrow. I need tortillas and I'm gonna go ahead and use these corn tortillas that I have. These were down in the freezer and I had a whole bunch of them. So making a lasagna would be the perfect thing to use all of these up with. Uh, I have a quart of beef here. I have two quarts of salsa. If I need any more than this, I can go ahead and grab it. Um, and then I have some beans here that I will uh, crush and make some refried beans with. So then I'm just basically going to layer the lasagna just like you would a normal lasagna, but you're using Mexican ingredients uh, with it. The flour tortillas, the beef, oh, we got cheese, um, and I probably will use a can of this nacho cheese sauce as well, just for some extra added creaminess. Um, and then I have my homemade sour cream um, that I made with the, the powder sour cream yesterday. I have that here. And I have some avocados here. These avocados are not quite ripe. They're still rock hard. So I went into my freezer and pulled out um, some frozen avocados. So I will use this to make guacamole. So we will have uh, guacamole to top along with like your shredded lettuce and stuff like that. Um, and I also have some tortilla strips to add some crunch to the top of the lasagna when it's time to serve. Um, so I'm just going to be laying, layering all this stuff. I am going to have the camera on so you can watch, but I'm going to speed it up and um, so you don't have to sit there and watch me, you know, and build all those layers. So, <clears throat> and this is Tuesday and Wednesday, the 10th and 11th of the 2023 Pantry Challenge. Okay guys, I'm just going to give you a quick explanation of how I'm building these layers. First, I'm putting the salsa down and then I'm going to go ahead and grab um, two of the corn tortillas. Since we're putting it with salsa, um, I want to make sure that I have two so just a single one doesn't fall apart. So we have a double layer of corn tortillas. Then I'm going to put in the ground beef, a little layer of ground beef. And here I'm going to add uh, the beans. I decided to keep them whole instead of smash them up because they're easier to spread out um, as whole beans. And then I'm using my homemade taco mix here and just sprinkling it on top of the meat and the beans. And then I'm adding a layer of cheddar cheese, white cheddar cheese here. And then here I have my sour cream. I'm going to be putting all of it on this layer uh, so I won't have to worry about doing that for every layer. So I just put all the sour cream in one layer. And then I'm going back with more tortillas and starting the layers all over again. With the, the meat, the...
beans, the salsa, and the cheese. And I'm going to do that until this, um, this baking dish is filled up. And here I'm also, on this layer, I put in the nacho cheese. Okay, so clearly that didn't really take me that long and I've got plenty more left over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one extra one as a freezer meal and then I'm gonna make a smaller portion for my mom and take it over to her um, so she can have for a dinner. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I was supposed to be taking out of the freezer, not quite building my freezer again. Um, but I've already opened this stuff up, so I'm going to go ahead and prep it and stick it in the freezer. It's a favorite of ours, so it's not like it's not going to get eaten. So here we go.
Okay, there you go. Made two full Mexican lasagnas and a small portion one to take over to my mom's. So I used up a lot of jars. I used two and a half of those bags. So with the rest of these, I think I may just um, cut them up and make tortilla chips out of. So all I'll have to do is bake these at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. Check it. If it's bubbly, then it's it's done. If it's not, you might want to you'll need to put it in for a little bit longer. Um, but anywhere between like 45 minutes and an hour, and it'll be done. And then you would just cut your piece like lasagna and uh, for your toppings you do whatever kind of toppings that you like like on tacos or um, any of that kind of stuff so I will be making some guacamole so I'll have guacamole for the top um, I'm going to put these crunchy little tortilla uh, strips on the top um, I will shred up some lettuce and we'll have some lettuce on the top as well so that is for dinner today and whenever I um whenever it's actually dinner time and I get everything plated up then I'll snap a picture and show you guys all right thanks guys see you later and just a note um this video that since I've been recording now some of the stuff you you might see on fast speed but this whole video only took 26 minutes to film and I made two full lasagnas plus a mini lasagna. So it just goes to show it doesn't have to take forever to make a dinner. And basically I've made three dinners, a small dinner for my mom, a freezer dinner for us for a later time, and a dinner for us tonight. Less than a half an hour, three dinners made. It doesn't have to take forever. And this is what I write on my freezer meals, which you'll, I'm going to do a whole bunch of freezer meal videos. So you guys will see this, but I write what it is, Mexican lasagna, and I write 350 degrees for 45 minutes if it's thawed, an hour and a half if it's frozen. Then dinner's ready. All you got to do is pull it out of the freezer and either let it thaw overnight or stick it right in the oven and you have dinner in, in an hour and a half without getting your hands dirty. Look how delicious that looks. Mexican lasagna. You want to take it out of the oven and you want to let it rest 10 minutes before you dig into it. Having egg salad for lunch. Just toasted up some bread. Put some egg salad on it. And I got some of those pickled veggies that I'm gonna go ahead and put on my sandwich. some alfalfa sprouts. And that is what's for lunch. Okay, time for lunch, so time for a break. And that night we had leftovers of ravioli and Mexican lasagna. Egg salad, alfalfa sprouts, and toast. Egg salad sandwich. Okay guys, time to serve up some dinner. Uh, 
lots of scallops. Make sure you get a lobster piece. Or two. And that herb butter melted right on the bread. That is what's for dinner, Thursday night.